fast food is an obvious necessity in all our lives, but it doesn't have to be all briskness and efficiency, which is just as well, because these are not my strong points. The idea here, for me, is food that I love eating, but that doesn't give me a nervous breakdown to cook. I mean, for example, a stir-fry will take hardly any time to cook, but the preparation can seem endless. What I'm after is minimum effort for maximum pleasure in both the cooking and the eating. A bit late. It's hard to think of food that's faster to cook than pasta, and my lemon linguine is incredibly fast. There are only a handful of ingredients for the sauce. And what's more, you don't even have to cook them. Now, a big pan of water, an incredibly big pan of water. I'm going to salt it now. I don't salt it before because the water actually comes to the boil faster if it hasn't got salt in it. This is quite a lot of salt, I know, but Italians say that the uh, water you cook pasta in should be as salty as the Mediterranean, which is such a wonderful poetic idea in sort of life, food, culture, everything, all in one. I'm going to add the linguine. I love linguine. I mean, you can use any long pasta, it really wouldn't matter. But the point about this is that it's, it's thicker than spaghetti, but not as wide as tagliatelle. Denser, much meatier, which is perfect for a really light, creamy sauce. You don't feel it's being swamped, you just feel it's just what you want. Well, the water's come straight back to the boil, so the sauce. Hmm. Eggs, butter, cheese, Cream, lemons, perfect. Very simple, no cooking. Now, I don't want the whites of these, but I find it much easier just to separate the eggs, cradling them from one hand to the other, rather than in the shell, which most people do, because then I just pierce it, the yolk. Um, if you're squeamish, I wouldn't advise it, but if you're not, I'm not. Then it's fine. Hmm. Other wonderful feeling as it goes through your fingers. The reason I'm beating it like this is because I really want it to get a bit sort of frothier and richer and all to bring out this, to emulsify almost, I suppose, like I was making mayonnaise. But it's nothing as complicated as that. And to aid this, some cheese. I don't think, you don't need to measure this, just grate in as much as you want. Cream. Now, I'm not adding too much. Just enough to make the sauce kind of swathe the pasta rather than drown it. It's rich but it's delicate, which is the best combination. Now my favourite bit, the lemon. I love the way when you zest lemons, you can smell it as you do it. I use a lot of the zest because I think that's the best part of the flavour, better even than the juice. Now again, really add as much or as little lemon juice as you like. I think just half a lemon is fine. I sometimes do put a whole lemon in, but, you know, these are quite large lemons. And anyway, taste it, you know, and if you want more lemon, add more lemon. And if you've over-lemoned, just add a bit more cheese and a bit more cream. Mmm, so fragrant, so comforting. I haven't added any salt because I think the parmesan is quite salty enough. And no pepper for a very good reason. This is harmonious, calm, voluptuous and creamy. I think pepper would interrupt that. Suddenly you get this speck of sharp pepper. That's not what I want. So I've drained it. Now I'm putting butter on because the butter shouldn't stop the sauce from clinging to it. In fact, it should almost seem to meld more with the sauce in a minute. But the really important thing is that you don't do this on the heat, because what you don't want is kind of lemony scrambled eggs. You want really gooey, unctuous sauce. Mm. Mm. I'm leaving some sauce back, because I want to put some on once it's in the bowl. Well. 
I mean, that's it. And how fast is that? I mean, it's the sort of food you can really, really make when you're so stressed out that the idea of cooking makes you want to shriek. And it smells so wonderful. It smells like the lemon groves of a multi or something. But with the cream in it there, it's just that mellowness, which means you just feel like you're eating liquid velvet. And the last bit, which is I just want to put a teeny bit more lemony emulsion, just pour it on, just to coat it, so it just it looks as wonderful as it will taste. It's going to do a final smattering of cheese, just a slight hint, just to pick up the depth in the sauce. And just because I find the freshness just so spring-like with the lemons, some parsley. I mean, this is just the quick way, and I quite like having the parsley rather big, and it, like it's another ingredient, not just a decoration. Not just because I'm lazy. This is the Exhausted Mother's Tea Time Special. Jar of tomato sauce. Water. And rice. And what this makes is a really lovely thick tomato and rice soup. It takes 10 minutes if you use basmati and you don't do anything. That's me. When I'm really pressed for time, it's the shopping I just can't cope with. So I fill up my deep freeze with all the regular building blocks for my favourite fast food recipes bacon, which I freeze in pairs, because it makes the defrosting very, very quick. And bacon is such a good way of giving instant flavour to food. And anyway, I can never be more than two minutes away from a bacon sandwich. Pancetta, which is Italian bacon, incredibly useful in cooking. And it's not that easy to get, so it makes sense when you do get it, to stash it away in lots of different pieces so you can just bring it out and not have to go shopping every time you need it. Meat and marinades. This is so useful. If you marinade meat before you freeze it, it will start marinating really well when you stick it in the deep freeze, and then it seems to kind of doubly tenderize it as it's thawing. This is beef in chili and soy, and chicken with lemon and garlic, I think, and olive oil. So you take it out in the morning, you get back in the evening, and your meat is both thawed and beautifully tender. Peas, how could I leave this out? This is such a useful ingredient. I don't mean just like you know, making peas, we all know about making peas, but as an ingredient in cooking, you can use it in so many ways. But for me, most importantly, it's my upmarket mushy peas. And with my mushy peas, it has to be salmon fillets fried with bacon. I love all fish with bacon fat. Just think it just gives something. Maybe it's the um, hint of the far off sea. Although where salmon comes from, I suspect it's not the sea, but then I'm a city girl, I'm not expected to know these things. My skill lies in eating. And of course, the longer it cooks, this bacon, the more those wonderful sort of salt, sweety juices will go into the fat and give off fat, which is why I've used streaky bacon, not bat bacon. Now, this bacon is really crisp now, which is just how I want it, so that it's almost crunchy against that oily softness of the fish. And, and again, a contrast with the sweet, almost moosiness of my mushy peas. What I've got in here are some garlic cloves. And the benefit of putting them in the water to start off with before I even cook the peas is, one, it cuts the, the sharpness of the garlic, making it sweet and mellow, and skins come off much more easily than if you were just peeling them from scratch. So the idea, take the skins off, plonk them back in, throw in the peas, and just cook them for a few minutes, three minutes or so, and then the peas are ready, and then blitz them all. I couldn't live without frozen peas in my deep freeze. I think the snobbery against them is ridiculous, because unless you've got peas in your own garden, there's no advantage in using fresh, because by the time 
you buy them. Or well, they've all gone to starch anyway, so really I think it is better to use frozen ones. This salmon will need about four minutes, one minute on the first side and then three minutes on the other side just to get lovely and golden and seared. And then I'll just put them on one side while the peas, my lovely pretty pois, get turned into mushy peas. Heaven on the plate. That's the idea. Now for a bit of blitzing. My Jean-Paul Gaultier. Creme fraiche. Don't have to use creme fraiche, but I like the slight soundness because peas are very, very sweet. Butter. Yum. Pepper. Salt. Not much, I might add more if I need it later. And we're off. That's it. Four. So all I have to do now is add this to the salmon. You'll see how beautiful the green of the peas looks against that corally pink of the salmon. I mean, I'm, don't go in for picture book presentation, as you might have noticed, but I love just the beautiful colours of food. Oh, that sounds terrible, but I do. Yum, yum, yum. All you need is a fork. You can eat this in front of the television. I think of my store cupboard, really, as a kind of working partner to my deep freeze, by which I mean I keep these in here that save me from having to go shopping if friends are coming around for supper midweek. Now, three ideas for really fast improvised puddings. You keep a tub of vanilla ice cream in your deep freeze. Sultanas in rum. They're so good, and you can imagine how easy these are to make. And I speak as someone who loathes bought rum and raisin ice cream, so when I say these are delicious, you've got to believe me. Stem ginger. I, I kind of love this stuff. There's something very evocative about it. You eat vanilla ice cream with this. You feel like you're having something off the pudding trolley from some provincial 1950s seaside hotel. Only it's better. And my favourite. This is coffee. So what you do is you make a really strong jug of coffee. You have your bowl full of vanilla ice cream, cold, cold, cold and you pour over a cup of hot espresso. And this makes what the Italians call affogato, which means drowned. So good. And, I mean, could it be easier? Mm -mm. Can you just put the bottom one on top? And then the lights are scooping. Wide hold sit. Oh, I apologise. Actually, it's rather wonderful when it runs out. Yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I'm in one of those really awful, <laughs> bad English porn films of the 70s. Actually, it's very nice. You know how it is when you've invited your friends over for supper in the middle of the week, you think, what a great idea. And then, as the day dawns, you really begin to panic and how you're going to do the shopping, cooking, the lot. I have an answer, because we've all been there, and it's this. A simple two-course supper you can get on the table, really, within half an hour or so of getting back from work. Chicken with couscous and really divinely gooey chocolate puddings. I find it easier to start with a pudding first, and I can just get it out of the way and forget about it. And what I've got here is 125 grams of butter. I'm being precise because with baking you do really need to be precise. It's different from just a stew or something. And 
same weight of really good dark chocolate. Then all I'm going to do is stroll over to the microwave and melt them. And the microwave is the best and fastest way to melt chocolate. Two minutes at medium should do it. That's it. While the chocolate and butter are melting, I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar to three eggs I've already stuck in here. And three tablespoonfuls of flour. One, two, three. And just stir this to all the ingredients are combined, and that's all. Great, that's melted perfectly. All I'm going to do is add the egg mixture to the chocolate mixture. And then just pour into four buttered ramekins. It just needs 10 minutes in a hot oven to cook, so I'm not going to put it in the oven until we've more or less finished eating the chicken, which is just so easy. Stash these away until you need them. And then on with the main course, griddle chicken with herb spike yoghurt and couscous. Chicken portions can be a bit tough unless you marinate them. And the lemon is particularly good because the acidity breaks down some of the fibres of the meat. Just a bit of oil. And let's get my favourite bit. Just squish it round in here and really kind of bash it round. Mm -hmm. And this, get rid of the day's stresses. Better to do that before your guests come. And that's it. You know, five minutes will do. Ten minutes is better, but either. Well, in a few minutes, while the chicken's marinating, I'm just going to get on with making a sauce. Now, when I'm up against it, well, one thing I don't want to do is start faffing about with a sort of proper cook sauce. So what I'm going to do is this lovely Greek yogurt sauce with chilli, spring onions and herbs. And when I say Greek yoghurt, I do mean Greek yoghurt, because if you use one of those natural low-fat yoghurts, it'll be so thin and mean, to be frank, just don't bother with the sauce at all. You can use bio at a pinch. Now, into my yoghurt, I'm going to add a couple of spring onions, some coriander. It's like a drug, it's so strong. Mint. And I'm just going to chop the herbs, and I'm using my mezzaluna, so named because it's the Italian word for half moon and this is this blade is broadly speaking a half moon shape and I love this it is incredibly useful but I like it because I'm actually incredibly clumsy and this makes me feel like one of those kind of super competent people and a couple of cloves of garlic now I'm going to lean on the garlic my considerable body weight now, chilli. Trust me, I'm not a doctor. The reason I'm wearing these for my de-seeding operation is because it's the best way, if unglamorous, I can think of, of stopping myself burning my face or my eyes later. I am now showering the whole of the kitchen with seeds. Luckily, I don't have a dog. Actually, I do have a dog. <laughs> Dog's away, though. If you want to, I mean, if you like this really hot, leave the seeds in. But I think only do that if you're dining with someone you're intimate with. And now I'm going to disrobe, de-rubber. And just fold everything in. So that's it, more or less. Let me just... Mmm. Mmm. Lovely. Now the chicken's had its ten minutes marinating. 
and I'm just going to whack it on this grill. No oil, because there's oil in the meat, of course. Luckily, I might be able to squeeze this one here. Yep. So now, while the chicken's cooking, really five minutes aside or so, I am going to get on with the couscous, which is so much simpler than you might think. No steaming involved. I'm just going to pour out about, I don't know, a half a litre of water, just hot from the kettle, and then some chicken stock. You can use cubes, but I love this liquid stuff because it melts down very quickly and it tastes fab. And this is so simple. You shake out some couscous, which may not look like a lot, but couscous swells, and that's really the wonder of it. Some chickpeas. I've just drained the water out over the sink. And then, just pour over this. Oh, perfect. I mean, cover the couscous by about two to three centimetres, inch in old money. I'm just going to put this glass on top of that, and frankly, that's all I'm going to do. Hello. Hello. Merci. Chicken should be ready for turning now, so absolutely perfect. Look at that golden stripiness. Gorgeous. I think we'll need about another four minutes, that's all. This grill is so hot. And if you don't have a griddle, well, just use either a frying pan or an ordinary grill inside the oven. Nothing. Just sat on the floor and ate all this food. And then... yes, thank you. I hate neat and mimsy food, so I'm just going to have the plate tumbled with lemons. Here we are. Just a bit of paprika, or a lot of paprika. Yeah, I think it's better with pepper fresh because it's not less than sour. Mm -hmm. 